Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, the 17th of February, 2012. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trend speaking. Let's take a look at this market here. Uh, we had a positive week. The market was up 1.5% uh, on the SP, uh, S&P 500, uh, about the same in the NASDAQ. Semiconductors had a better week up close to 3%, and oil was up as well. But, uh, you know, this was another week where it looked like the market was going to maybe uh, correct through time, or perhaps we would see a little bit of a pullback uh, price-wise. But we do continue to see uh, that the larger uptrend continues to be uh, more powerful, and that the consolidations we're getting uh, continue to get uh, be continue to be won through time rather than through price. So it looked like we were locked within this range, but of course the uh, market uh, started moving higher a little bit yesterday and added to that a little bit further today, uh, which really gave us our gains for the week the last two days. Um, but it was looking really like um, you know is, 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 that we. We would test that 134 and perhaps break through it um, but as I was you know always say that we want to see um, if we're gonna short this market you only want to do it for the very short time frames because the primary trend is higher and the odds simply don't favor the short sales so uh, what we want to focus on next week is that we continue to uh, maintain this pattern of higher highs and higher lows I think the first initial test that ought to be important early in the week is really about 135.50 we will say that's our first level we want to see hold that's about where we'll find that rising five-day moving average early on and then of course the bigger level uh, is just below that 134 level, about 133.80. So as long as we continue to remain above that 133.80 and we still have this pattern of higher highs and higher lows, we have a rising 5, 10, 20 day moving average, uh, the, the burden of proof really remains on the sellers. We, we're in an uptrend. It's easy to look at this and say, well, you know, look at the uh, year to date uh, gains and in six weeks, we've had the S&P 500 up uh, close to 9%, NASDAQ up close to 14%. And you look at it and say there's no way that these types of, of moves can be sustained, and I would agree with that. But the point is we can't try to pick a top here uh, and, and fight the trend. As it said, it's better to be on the sidelines uh, you know, wishing that you were in the market rather than it is to be in the market and wishing you were out. Rather, you know, in other words, you know, it's better if you're if you're having a hard time believing what you're seeing. It's better to just stand aside rather than to try and jump in front of it and, and to sell short. Um, so the primary trend continues to exert its uh, dominance here, and it, you know, while we go cautious once in a while, uh, you know, we as as it, as we were talking about this 134 level. I'm not very speaking very well today. Um, but as we uh, go a little bit cautious from time to time, it doesn't mean, again, that we're looking for a breakdown or that we're, we're getting bearish. It means, hey, the market's had a big run here. It's starting to slow down. Let's see what this turns into. But continue to focus on the good trade setups, which are plentiful. And we're you know showing tons of those uh, in each day at Alpha Trends on the premium service. Um, take a look at the uh, NASDAQ. That market continues to just really rally strong. And uh, it's maintain this year every single day on a closing basis above that rising 10-day moving average which is really a phenomenal feat here and I think our, our, our uh, string of uninterrupted days without a 1% uh, pullback in the S&P 500 is now about 27 or so um, the the bigger level that we'll, we're aware of uh, that has the potential to become a battleground uh, you know possible resistance would be that 65 level but as we know this market has been just tearing through every prior uh, level of resistance and, and, and really making a mockery of those people who are shorting against those levels because you know the breakouts just can continue to occur this was potential resistance then we looked at these levels and then the highs for the year but it just continues to uh, to move higher and the the correct way to look at a, any market uh, especially a trending market is what's the direction of those uh, highs and lows and we continue to see a pattern of higher highs and higher lows above that rising 10-day moving average which just got uh, uh, covered up by this trend line but you know we continue to, to touch maybe on that trend trend line but not break below it and again as as we saw in some of these other markets breaking the trend line might just mean that we're, we're due for a little bit more of a sideways consolidation if we look at the uh, Nasdaq we didn't make a new high in here today or yesterday so you know the market peaked on Wednesday in the uh, in the Nasdaq and that's really you know if, if you think about why was that well of course that's when Apple peaked and that's uh, you know such a large component let's just take a look at Apple for a moment a lot of people are calling this the top and we don't know that 
that yet. Certainly there was big volume there. If we take a look at, you know, what I think you want to start to monitor is the average price since this sell-off. So a three-day volume weighted average price. And I tweeted this early in the morning. This, you know, is, is a battleground right now. I think if you get this market back probably above today's highs, back above 508 or so, that it's likely that we'll see a push that even takes us to a higher high here because I think there's too many people trying to be too smart and pick a top in a stock like Apple. And, uh, there, I, you know, I think there's a possibility they're going to get run over. But anyways, back to the, uh, to the NASDAQ, of course, that's again, when Apple peaked here was Wednesday, uh, we pulled back and to a to a level that made sense. That was the uh, previous little level of resistance here uh, for money, Monday, but that held as support. So here's a near-term level that the market is assigning uh, significance to. That is $62.60. If we break below that and hold below it for more than a half hour or so, perhaps we're going to go down uh, to, and, and here's that 62.60 level, perhaps we're going to go down towards uh, closer to 60 62 and maybe a little bit further than that so it's definitely extended it's you know it's used a lot of energy getting to where it is um, but you know if we maintain above 6260 for now that also keeps us above this trend line and of course it's innocent till proven guilty there is a possibility we break below 6260 and then you know completely fall apart I don't think that's what the odds favor but a couple days of selling would be really a healthy thing for this market it's something that we always have to be aware of that could be right around the corner the Russell 2000 um, still you know holding below some levels in here such as this uh, 84 and a half ish area and, and hasn't made a high for the year. Um, then that the S and P 500 hasn't either, but it's very, a lot closer than the uh, Russell 2000 is. But you look at this weekly chart; it's it's holding up nicely. You look at the daily time frame; we've got this uh, sideways consolidation above a rising 10, 20, and 50-day moving average. Now. If you look at the 65 minute time frame in here and we say what represents the essence of trend, we can you know kind of draw a couple trend lines and, and maybe this is the one that you you want to focus on. Uh, if this is the trend line you're focused on, you can see we briefly broke it, but we held above the key level of support and that's more important. Breaking a trend line is kind of a first uh, warning sign then we want to say well okay it might have broke the trend line but we're still holding above key support at about eighty dollars and ninety five cents as long as we continue to hold above that then we give the uh, benefit of the doubt to the larger time frame look at the larger time frame because the consolidations uh, it, it tend to resolve themselves in the direction of the primary trend. The primary trend, of course, remains higher in the Russell 2000. And next week, we want to stay focused again on about $80.90. Uh, near term, uh, you know, first level that uh, maybe gets us a little bit cautious is if we break this 8240 level. Um, and then in the semiconductors, which had a, a real nice week, and Intel, uh, which is strange because it was down today, but Intel broke out here, you can see. Um, anyways, back to the semiconductors. Uh, they had a very nice week. Um, there's been, you know, any attempt to pick a top in here has been a, a, an exercise in futility. Um, perhaps we're going to see a little bit of resistance up near about 36. That would be our next level. Uh, looking at a 65-minute time frame in here, again, what represents the essence of trend? Um, we kind of rode that trend line in here this week, and we maintained above the key level, that key level being about $33.90. As long as we maintain above $33.90, this is very similar to the support that we see right here in, in the Russell 2000. So back to the semiconductors, uh, this $33.90 level uh, is the key support but we also want to see now that we've broken beyond that little resistance that hopefully we'll see about 35 hold is as, uh, as a first level of support uh, early next week 3390 let's just call it um, you know basically this is the little band of prior resistance 3390 to 33 uh, 35 so if we can maintain above that that'll be good to see uh, and then if not then we're probably gonna see a test of this 34 level if we break 34 perhaps we're gonna see a little bit of more of a correction price rise uh, rather than through time and then uh, that could take us down to 33 and a quarter or so but we've still got this rising 50-day moving average and these markets you know early on they tend to test the rising 10-day moving average the pullbacks get a little bit deeper to the 20 and then later on to the 50-day moving average it doesn't mean we're gonna see a large pullback to that instead what we see a lot of times is that the the 50-day moving average will catch up to the market while the market uh, corrects through time the uh, 
uh, financials are another market that you know very much hated by a lot of people but they're maintaining above key levels this big prior support that led to the big breakdown last year you know late last in the second half of last year um, this prior support is, is once again acting as support in about 14 and a half now the next area of potential resistance we've been talking about is about 15 and a half as we know uh, weeks ago we broke that downtrend line in here and uh, the 200 day moving average which a lot of people thought was a top but the fact is you know it's okay to look at the 200 day moving average and say hey there's the potential for resistance but what is the pattern the pattern remains higher highs and higher lows you can't sell short with higher highs and higher lows it's foolish um, the key level in here that we want to see hold next week will be about fourteen dollars and forty cents if we break the 1440 level then I think you're gonna see that the uh, financials perhaps we bleed down to about 1390 and that 50-day moving average will catch up basically to that uh, and and that's where we'll you know we'll see them intersect and probably uh, that should contain any pullback I would think so I hope everyone enjoys the long weekend we've got three days to uh, uh, be safe and have fun uh, if you're not familiar with my work uh, I post a lot more of it uh, for those of you that view it at YouTube I post a lot more than what you see here uh, on YouTube than I uh, on my site alphatrends.net and uh, I would encourage you to go take a look in particular at that uh, tab that says favorite posts there's a lot of good educational stuff in there and and uh, thanks for tuning in.